So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today I wanted to make a quick video on a follow up to iPadOS 14.5 beta 2 because we've been using it for about 6-7 days now and I feel like I have a better understanding of what Apple's trying to get to with their 14.5 public release. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's get right into exactly some of the other new features that I did find out with iPadOS 14.5 beta 2. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is obviously the new emojis. So if we go into any keyboard right here, go into the emoji section, now you can not only search for your emojis, but then you now have over 217 new emojis to play around with. And we kind of touched about those in the past, but again, it's mostly just a handful of probably 15 new emojis or 20 new emojis, but then each one has their own you know, seven or eight different iterations or different colors or different color ways uh, for that single emoji. So that's what you're dealing with from an emoji standpoint. Another thing that came up that was kind of cool that I actually saw from Zolo Tech was the fact that you can now update via cellular depending on where you are in the world, right? It's very world specific. So for right now, I don't believe it happens in the US, but you now are able to update your firmware or your software through cellular in certain places on the planet like India. And then another thing that I noticed is that Apple actually took away this that little new splash screen. So when you were to check to see what iPad OS you were on, there used to be a little check mark. They did that for about one update and then they got rid of it. So I don't know if that was on purpose, if they had a reason to do that, but it's gone. Another thing that I have noticed is that Face ID with a mask on does not work, right? Even if you do have your Apple Watch on, it still won't work with the iPad Pro. Now it works with iOS, it works with iPhones and iPhone 12 and higher, but for some reason they didn't bring it for the iPad and it might be because most people use their iPad Pros indoors and they don't really need have a mask on when they're inside of their own home. So I think that's the reason why they're not bringing that feature, even though it would be really cool to just press a button on your Apple Watch and have your iPad unlocked because you can do that with your MacBook and you've been able to do that with your MacBook for years. So why not let us do it on the iPad Pro? So another one has to do with Scribble. So if you go into your settings, go into the Apple Pencil and do Try Scribble, you now know that it works with different languages. So if you do Try Scribble, press it right there, let it do its thing there and type in Hola, it should come up in Spanish. So it does work and I think it does work with Spanish, German, French, Italian and Portuguese. So those are the new languages that were brought on with Scribble and Apple Pencil. Another privacy feature that's been added on, which I mentioned before, is the fact that now with iPad specifically, for some reason when it had a smart folio case and you were to close it shut and the microphone was on, the microphone would still be on in the background. So now no matter what, if you have a smart folio, whether it is the Magic Keyboard or something a lot cheaper, if it has a smart folio cover, then it will kill the microphone no matter what is going on in the background. So if you are doing some sort of voice memo, if you are recording audio or video, if you slap that smart cover shut, it'll kill the audio no matter what. And that's pretty much gonna do it in terms of a new feature standpoint. But what I do wanna touch on is the actual performance from a battery life perspective, because I've been using this for about a week now, and you guys can see that for the last 24 hours, this thing has been plugged in nonstop, because again, I don't really use it on the weekends, and that's where we're at right now, but if you go to the last 10 days, this is what we're dealing with. So you got about four hours and 56 minutes of screen on time, you see that with LumaFusion, that's where most of my you know, battery life goes in. Average screen off time, about 20 hours. And it's not bad. I haven't seen any detriment to the battery. Again, nothing positive to the battery, really. But again, nothing bad to the battery. Because you're looking at about, I guess today has only been 26 minutes of screen on time. But again, normally, you're looking at about four hours, maybe five hours of screen on time with a three-year-old iPad Pro. So keep that in mind that this thing is three years old. And then overall, I've had no real issues. The only issue I've had a couple times is with LumaFusion itself, but I think that's just because I'm on the beta software, and sometimes I just have to reset LumaFusion, but nothing gets lost, I don't lose any saves. It it's all kind of just stays there, it's just a matter of just resetting it once and it works good to go. So far, iPadOS 14.5 Beta 2 has been great. I have zero complaints. If anything, it's gotten better, and the more privacy features, the better in my opinion. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. As everybody saw, the name of the game is privacy, privacy, privacy for Apple and their iOS and iPadOS betas moving forward. Apple's making a very big push on privacy because other manufacturers just aren't doing that from a software perspective. So being inside that wall garden for Apple, yes, it's got its pros and its cons, but one of the biggest pros is the fact that you do get all that privacy and that peace of mind when it comes to your devices and all of your information that's on there as well, right? And outside of that, you do get those auxiliary features like the one in the Apple Music and the new emojis and things like that. So Apple's making 
it more feature packed little by little. But I do think that as we go forward, it's gonna be a privacy play. And then hopefully with iPad OS 15, we get that secondary monitor support with that new iPad Pro that's coming out. But that's gonna do it for this video. Leave a comment below exactly what software you're on, whether it is on iOS or iPad OS. I'm always curious to know exactly what's going on, but that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, peace.